I'm Don Foster, Principal Attorney at the Offit Kerman Law Firm. It is my pleasure to introduce you to Jane Scacchetti, the CEO of the Drucker & Scacchetti Accounting Firm. So, you know, my board experience started uh, many, many years ago with just maybe being active in the community, but over the years I've been very, very fortunate and um, I have had the opportunity to serve on public company boards. And Pep Boys was a, a, a great opportunity for many, many years. And during that time for a small cap company um, headquartered in Philadelphia, it had at least three times been um, challenged and, you know, you could call it attacked by activists to come onto the board. Um, in, in two of those three instances, activists that the New York Times put on the top five most active activists list. Um, so, and that, those kinds of things really do impact a company. And so when you're on that board and you are both um, dealing with the activist mentality, which is a little bit different, um, and dealing with management and trying to to give the kind of governance that the board wants to give to management in order to move the company forward, recognizing that you're there as a representative of the shareholders and other constituent groups in Pennsylvania, but mostly the shareholders. Um, all of that was really challenging and I learned so much. First of all, the board was composed of outstanding business people who had tremendous experience where we could learn from one another and it really was an, an, an interesting board and it changed over the years. Um, I worked with two activists that I think had more of a short-term mentality, but I worked with one activist that was on the board for seven or eight years who had a much longer view, which um, was the opposite of what everyone expected. Um, and then when we had an opportunity, we knew that we needed to do something. Pep Boys is a unique company because while it serves the after auto market, um, it does, it does both retail, in other words, it will sell you the battery that you can install, and it does service, it'll install the battery for you. So that do it for me, do it yourself was, uh, is not housed in one institution in any of the other businesses. So if you think of um, Bridgestone, they are service. If you think of AutoZone, they are retail. So we at some point wanted to look at an opportunity to split the company, and which is very hard to do, because if you've ever been to a Pep Boys, they're one big box, um, two sides, but it's not something you can put a wall up. So as we started to do this, activists became active in the company, and um, you know, eventually we put the company into play and went into look for strategic opportunities. Um, we had a couple of um, good people come forward with some um, offers. We selected one, um, which was at $15 a share in cash, and uh, I guess a couple of weeks later, the stock was trading above 15, which is unusual if you've just announced the sale for the company at 15. So you knew something was going on in the stock, but we didn't know what. And then it turned out that Carl Icahn, who had um, been involved in the company before that, asking about buying it and then saying he wasn't interested, decided he was. So that started an auction effectively for the company. So over Christmas uh, all the way up to New Year's Eve, um, we had record number of board meetings and calls and um, working with the bankers and doing the due diligence we needed to do and then understanding it. And they're not super complex deals, but they are complex enough. They're not simple. Um, so this, that was pretty exciting. So the company did close on a little while ago, so um, it is now private. And uh, so that was a great opportunity for me. Um, there was a $35 million breakup fee, which meant that at one point, and I don't know how much of this, you know, but at one point, Carl Icahn had bid $13.50. And we thought, okay, you know, went back and said, we have price offers higher. Are you interested? And he said, I'll call you back, call back. I said, no, I'm good. We said, fine. So we moved forward. When we moved forward, there was a $35 million breakup fee. And that breakup fee, and everything I'm telling you is public documents, but that breakup fee amounted to about 62 cents a share. So whoever came back in, if they offered 1550, they were really offering 1550 plus 62, you know, you're really at 1612. So there was always that piece. And then when Icon came back a second time to counter on something from Bridgestone, he basically said, you know, the, 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 
price will be a breakup fee of 35 plus 35. I want to be reimbursed if someone comes in and tops my offer and I've just paid 35 to Bridgestone so I need another 35. So it was it was all fascinating and to watch that that mindset. I remember all of us went, "Wow, that makes sense." <laughs> you know, like for a moment, like, "Wait, I understand that." So um, so that was really exciting. And Penn Gaming is just a totally different experience for me. Um, my experience in the casino world was maybe taking my mom to play slots, um, not something that I necessarily had a background in. But I did have a background in retail, and I did have a background in, in brands. Um, and because I'm considered a financial expert under the SEC, um, they were looking for an audit chair. And so I went on the Penn Gaming Board. And that has been um, a real eye-opener for me. And, and I'm learning a lot, and I'm enjoying it. And they're a great group of talented executives, um, some of the best talent that I've ever worked with. So I'm enjoying that, too.